What is up amigos? Today we are looking at the circulation. We'll be going through what is the circulation, the relationship with vorticity, and the interpretations of circulation and its uses. So first up, what is circulation? Well, let's say I have a fluid. It can be like this entire page if you like. And in this fluid, we have one closed line integral. We can have any closed line integral that you want. We're just picking this one here. So this C is representing this line here. So the circulation, which we denote usually by gamma, the Greek letter, is defined as the negative of the closed loop integral of the velocity vector, the vector there, times ds. So that little step. So we put a negative here, first of all, because circulation, we typically say if it's pos if it's going clockwise, then it's positive. Counterclockwise, it's negative. That's just the notation that we, we, we use. So what does this mean? If we have the ds, we know what ds is. We can specify that. And we know what the velocity vector is along this entire line, this closed loop integral. We can perform this equation here to find out what the circulation is. And it may seem to you at the moment that, like, what's the point? Like, what does it matter? <laughs> it's just a regular equation, a random one. What does circulation mean? What do we use it for? We'll be getting to this in the third part. First of all, let's talk about its relationship with the vorticity, because once we understand that as well, we can then figure out more uses for the circulation. So the circulation not only equals this, but it also equals the negative surface integral of effectively vorticity. So I'll cover this in a second. Let's say we have another part here, it can be anything. It's just the surface integral of the vorticity, which is uh, del cross product with the uh, velocity vector. And we know what ds is here. And this is a closed loop as well. So these are two different equations to determine what the circulation is. And this part here, I should note, if you've watched our vorticity um, video, you will know that this is also vorticity. So those are two different explanations of what circulation is. But what does this mean in real life? That's where we come to the interpretations and the uses. Well, the very first interpretation is related to the circulation, the vorticity, sorry. So gamma is typically also known as the strength of a vortex. And this is very important because as I've covered in other podcasts and other videos, often people misinterpret the vorticity as the strength, but it's not. The circulation is the strength of the vortex. So you can have a lot of vorticity, but depending on how much of an area it covers, it may or may not be stronger than another vortex. That's why we need to calculate the, vortex, the circulation, sorry. The other interpretation of the circulation is it relates to the lift. And this is a really cool little feature here. So there's something called the cutter joukowsky theorem. Cutter, K-U-T-T-A, Joukowsky, J-O-U-K-O-W-S-K-I theorem. And this states that the lift per uh, unit span is proportional to the circulation. So if we have an airfoil, let's say we have the airfoil profile here. No, I drew it a bit poorly, but anyway, <laughs> we extend it out and we have the rest of the airfoil here. And we take some sort of cross section. So let's say this cross section along here. And we want to see what the, the lift per unit span is here. So just the lift along this cross section. If we know the circulation, we can then calculate what the lift per unit span is. The lift per unit span equals the free stream density times the veloc this free stream velocity times the circulation. So this is a very powerful equation as well. We now not only can figure out what the strength of a vortex is from the circulation, we can figure out how much lift is being produced at this point on the airfoil with knowing that as well. So if we want to figure out what the entire lift over the airfoil is, we can just take a lot of different um, cross sections and figure out what the lift is at each one of these spans and integrate along the entire airfoil. So these two are very powerful um, characteristics of the circulation. There's one final thing that I want to ask, and that is, I'm gonna leave this as a question for you. What happens if the circulation equals zero? So we can sort of figure out with the airfoil if the circulation is zero, it means that the lift over this particular area is zero. But what about when it comes to a vortex? If we have a circulation of zero, what does that mean for a vortex? So that's the end of this video. I'm gonna recap what we just covered and 
write in the comments below what your answer is to the question that I posed, which is if the circulation is zero, how does that affect the vortex? So we covered what is the circulation. If we have a fluid anywhere, and we have a closed line integral, a closed line, sorry, loop around some portion of the fluid, and we have this circulation is now defined as the negative of the closed loop integral of the velocity vector with ds. This also equals the negative of the area integral of the circulation, oh, sorry, of the vorticity effectively, uh, del cross with the velocity vector times ds. And these relate to a couple important things in aerodynamics and fluid mechanics in general. First of all, if we calculate the circulation over, let's say we have a vortex in this region, we calculate the circulation around this vortex, this gives us the strength of the vortex. If we calculate the circulation around an airfoil, a cross-section of the airfoil, we can then, through the Kutler-Joukowsky theorem, figure out what the lift over this cross-sectional area is. And if we take a lot of cross-sectional areas, we can then integrate it along the airfoil and figure out what the entire lift is across the entire airfoil. That's how powerful circulation is. So that's in this video. Make sure to like this if you got a lot out of it. And if you want to see more of our videos, click the subscribe button. And if you want to learn more about any other theory on aerodynamics, I highly recommend the book by John D. Anderson called Fundamentals of Aerodynamics. It's a book that I used a lot during my university days. You can find the link to that in the description. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace out, amigos.